About eight years ago, a new shipyard introduced itself to the market. The name Salona, and it's based in Spalato in Croatia. And Salona is the Roman name for the city of Spalato. It started in the best possible way by introducing a model, the 45, which has had extreme success. This is because it's a well-balanced, elegant, sporty boat with a distinct quality in the living quarters. After about eight years of production and more than 50 boats sailing, the shipyard felt it was time to renew its flagship. The model, which will substitute the 45, is the 44. And today we're going to see if it has what it takes to take the place of the 45. The project of the Slovenian brothers, Jakopin, resumes the Salona philosophy, which is a sports boat without forcing and with good living quarters. So the spaces are distributed in a balanced way so as not to change the trim when the boat is listing or when carrying typical loads for cruising. Great attention has been paid to the appearance with cut-off stern and a pronounced shear. There have been advances too in the construction. To differentiate themselves from mass producers, Salona has made the 44 with more refined techniques and materials. Indeed, both the hull and deck are in sandwich construction with vinyl ester resin and infusion lamination. An imposing steel spider has been used for the structure which also includes the parts of the furniture attached to the floor in the wardroom. Among the interesting construction details, what stands out most is the large steel structure. It's very robust and the flooring and the base of the dunnage. Obviously, it discharges the chain plates at the base of the mast and on the latter central plate all the studs of the hull. But there's another very interesting detail, and that is the base for all the furniture in the wardroom, because apart from being extremely robust, which gives a further strengthening rib for the whole structure, it's also equipped with air holes. So all the basic wardroom furniture is ventilated. In spite of the fact that the example on trial is a prototype, so a boat for which they are also studying alternative solutions, and therefore liable to many improvements, the finishings are of excellent quality. But above all, the new tendency is highlighted by the Salona furnishings. They're all in teak, which is used with horizontal vein. That's a sign of modernity. Right from the start, one of the main characteristics of Salona is the distinct sportsmanship of the decks, in spite of the fact that below decks there's a strong inclination for family cruising. This peculiarity is further accentuated on this model. We can see that in this area a bench has been created to provide a greater sense of safety. And this can be easily removed and consequently recreate a completely open bridge. The stern has been cut rather straight, it loses a bit of elegance compared to other models, especially when compared to the 45, but it gains both in terms of habitability and in performance. It becomes a lovely spoiler resting on the water. This part of the main sail has been organized inside a recess, which means that when the boat is resting it can be covered with teak plates, so it becomes a completely smooth deck. But it creates a slight problem of practicality because some dirt can get inside. Proceeding towards the front, the cockpit acquires width, and it's very interesting compared to the 45, which didn't have them, creation of these two fundamental lockers below the benches. The winches are slightly recessed. The main sheet one is a bit ahead in terms of position, and we'll see in navigation if this brings about any problems. Going even further forward, there's a three construction with the stopper batteries deferred, the spray hood which has its own lodging, its own conch, so it can be completely packed away. As always happens on Salona boats, the sports imprint of the deck is carried through onto the gangways, which are decidedly wide and facilitated by a narrow deck house with rather vertical sides. This also allows the sheet lead is more internal compared to the average, above all of the cruise regatta boats. We can see many signs of modernization and updating, and it's one of the reasons why they needed to renew this model. The German-style main sheet is completely recessed under the bridge. It enters at the height of the shrouds and comes out here in front to serve the winches. Then all five skylights by Goyot, with generous dimensions, well, they're all flush. The new signature of the deck house, the Salona windows, foresees that these two long windows include three portholes which can be opened, three on each side. Overall, there are six portholes which can be opened on the deck house and two in the cockpit. 
In contrast to the latest fashions, the land are internal, and this allows for the adoption of a superimposed Genoa, which is the favourite sail for people who cruise, especially for long free sailing. You can also see that the shrouds have been produced round, as also the three cross mast. Going further on, a good sun deck space because the deck house has been cut short on the bow, and then an anchor locker, which is rather deep, that, even if the opening is a wee bit limited, it can also serve as a storage space. But it's necessary to shift the chain to get something in. That's a shame because the space is quite large. The steel nose, the hatchway, which is completely finished even on the inside, and you can see then the jib winder, which is completely hidden below decks, the bow pulpit on four supports. The biggest differences compared to the 45, though, can be found inside, where the layout is extremely different. The layout of the wardroom especially foresees an L-shaped galley on the left and a dinette with opposing sofas. The distribution of the cabins is traditional. Three cabins, two bathrooms, with the chance of a charter version having a fourth cabin with bunk beds, in the bow on the left, which leaves the passage towards the bow cabins free. The entrance stairway is in fiberglass, so as not to show signs of wear, but at the same time it has wooden stairs which are quite well moulded, and above all, it's not too vertical, so quite comfortable to climb down. It's supported by these two strong lifelines, and the cover opens completely to show the engine, which has been packed away quite tightly, but can anyway be inspected because it has other accesses on the sides directly from the cabins. It's the galley that highlights the great difference between the layout of the 45 and this one. Indeed, it's L-shaped with a small breakfast bar. It's a solution we prefer because it's more practical when you're sailing and makes the wardroom convivial, the dinette especially. Actually, below the worktop, the hob, you can use this position and cook quite comfortably. There are also many working spaces free, here and here, two fridges, a typical cockpit, and the other in a rather unhappy position, let's say, but it's, anyway, it's an extra fridge. Perhaps it would have been better to put it somewhere else. Two deep sinks where you can work well and plenty of storage spaces and a number of various drawers. There are several drawers on this boat, among which this large space, partially obstructed by the deck. The pumps may be moved and exploit this space better.